All right, what's going on guys? Trap back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video for today leading up to tonight's episode for The Walking Dead Season 9, which is episode 6 with all of the Rick talk this week. I think we almost forgot that we're going to see the first appearance of the Whispers tonight. Oh. And spoil the warning if you guys are not cut up for The Walking Dead, as per usual, all that good stuff, and uh, pretty excited for uh, tonight. But it's a strange kind of excitement because, of course, the series has changed so much in just one week. It's going to be uh, something to see how everybody feels about this new direction for The Walking Dead, the new characters that are leading it, and, of course, the new villains. But one thing that's really exciting is um, that it's going to be a lot different than what it's ever been before. Uh, also, it sounds like we're going to see you know more female leads in the series than we ever had, of course, with something a lot of us didn't think about. If you have Michonne leading the joint surviving communities as the number one for them, then the other side, we have a strong female villain coming into the show with, uh, with Alpha. So you have basically your strongest female character probably in the whole series in Michonne, and now you have the strongest female villain uh, that we've ever had in the series. Well, she, <laughs> I would think she's stronger than Dawn, probably, uh, from season and uh, five, if you, if, if you want to count Dawn and Beth, I suppose <laughs> you could do that. But, uh, you know, th this sounds cool, right? To get to see that kind of thing with the two of them kind of going at it. And that will probably start tonight, although I don't think they've exactly confirmed it. But, you know, in the, uh, the previews and everything like that, we get the impression that uh, after Rick is gone and the time skip, now they're getting into the stuff with the uh, the whispers. There's a part at the end of the trailer where Jesus and uh, Aaron are watching the walkers kind of do different types of behavior, like all kind of um, sort of circle up together instead of just aimlessly walking in some kind of direction. So they're actually seeing uh, walkers sort of stop at certain positions and things like this that they've never really uh, seen before. So they're kind of perplexed by what they're seeing. Uh, and of course, we have uh, the Whisperers group that basically wears the skins to blend in and is able to kind of drive around these mini herds or these <laughs> herds of zombies uh, to, you know, basically live with them, uh, which, you know, and blend in with them, which is something that is a totally new uh, idea. I don't think any of us really have thought that Rick would be gone before we saw the Whispers first. You know, a lot of us have seen Easter eggs and stuff like that in the season eight finale and whatnot. Uh, and we really, you know, I assumed, I figured that Rick would still be there when we first got to see the Whispers. A lot of us even thought that the Whispers might be responsible for killing Rick because, of course, they're a new group of villains that are finally coming in the show. And a lot of us have been anticipating seeing them for, you know, say like a couple years now. So, um, we have an interview here with Greg Nicotero where he teases the quote-unquote chilling and terrifying whispers. It says, Greg Nicotero, who has uh, long served as special effects makeup guru and director-producer on The Walking Dead, is antsy for audiences to meet uh, quote-unquote terrifying new enemy group, The Whispers, and chilling leader Alpha, uh, who's played by uh, Samantha Morton. Uh, and then it says, listen, we have a lot of story to tell. I'll be really honest, the casting... This season has been impeccable, Nicotero told Access. All the characters, it's been a joy to work with them. And uh, you take one look at Samantha Morton as Alpha, and it's chilling. It's chilling. <laughs> so then it says here, I left set and I went back uh, to see the makeup effects trailer with my crew. And they were like, I can't wait to see this season. My crew, the people that work on the show are excited about it. He says, let's stop there for a second. I knew he was going to love it, right? Because <laughs> with the Whispers, this is a new type of territory that they've never gotten into so far. They've done guts. They've done stuff like that. They've done, of course, tons and tons of zombies, probably hundreds of thousands of zombies now. Um, or probably at least close to, you know, I'm sure over over tens and tens of thousands, <laughs> into the hundreds probably, uh, over all the seasons and all the years of, of The Walking Dead. But they have never done characters wearing zombie skins and wearing zombie parts in order to fully blend in. So not just for the guts trick for like half an hour to walk through a herd or something or get out of there, like a no way out type situation or a guts situation from the uh, first season. But now you're dealing with a group that actually, you know, has, has ninja themselves into this where they have actually uh, absorbed this as a way of life and actually live among the dead 
uh, you know, uh, acting like them and uh, and wearing their uh, their skins, which is really cool. And how many of them will we see? I don't know, but it's going to be fun to try to pick them out, right? Uh, you know, to try to pick out like which ones are which ones are are, uh, are whispers, which ones are walkers. So far, we've gotten it wrong 100%. <laughs> Anybody who thought they've seen a whisper so far, it's always been wrong because that's before the time skip. The whispers haven't even come in until after the time skip, even though there was the writing on the wall and stuff like that, final warning and this stuff. Um, you know, I'm sure if uh, if if that was from them, we probably would have seen them before the time skip, or you know, it wouldn't be six years in between, right? Uh, then it says, um, uh, so all we can really hope is that mystery, that intrigue, the idea that there's this whole new threat coming and it's terrifying. I want it, to, or I want to uh, get to it as quickly as we can to let people see how dedicated we are to making the show great and keeping the show great. Uh, and then they get into, it says about his uh, exit, of course, Rick's exit, obviously. Uh, then it says, someone was doing an impersonation of a scene that she did, and even that scared me, uh, he said. I was like, oh my God, that's really scary. That's awesome. Because <laughs> if even, if Nicotero is scared by it, that's a really good sign. Because, <laughs> I mean, what is that guy? Spent his whole career, his whole life, making the scariest shit you can possibly imagine? No, scarier than you can imagine. Like, scarier than we can imagine. That's the whole point, right? You know, like, that's the whole, that's the whole genre of horror, right? In the 80s, 90s, you know, 2000s, 2010s, is, is to come up with shit that, like, you couldn't even imagine. That's how scary it, it is to actually see, right? Um, scarier than real life. So, that's cool, man. So, if... If that if that scared him, what's that going to do to us? It's going to be good, you know. And uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm I almost feel like I'm cheating because uh, it's like Rick's not here and I'm supposed to be sad, but this sounds awesome, right? <laughs> Alpha will be joined by daughter Lydia, who's played by Cassidy uh, McClincy, uh, and Vicious Number Two Beta Ryan Hurst. I can't wait to see that. Who is fiercely protective of both Alpha and his true face, which is always hidden behind a fleshy mask. Made of walker skin. Oh boy, is it ever. The Whispers officially arrived Sunday as part of uh, the first episode to follow the departure of Rick Grimes. Okay, so they are confirming. That's good because I, I wasn't 100% sure, but they are confirming that the Whispers will be in tonight. Uh, then it says here, uh, Nicotero elaborated on the uh, newness surrounding the series in the wake of Lincoln's exit and the ensuing lengthy time jump uh, with comicbook.com's uh, After the Dead, saying there's uh, so much great story coming up, and that uh, even in its ninth season, The Walking Dead Now really just feels like a different show. Well, I, I personally, to say, I felt like that as soon as I saw the end of episode five and I saw the promo, I was like, what the heck, this is a different show. It, it really is. And you wouldn't think that one character could change the whole series. But it's not even just that, the time skip, the way everybody looks so different, um, and, and the fact that you had your number one, and then, it, you know, a couple years ago, Carl would have probably been number two, you know, probably, so your number one and two, like, it's just, it's changed a lot, man, for sure. And now All at War's done, and Negan's gone, you know, Negan's done, this whole, it's just so different, man. And in a good way, Nicotero noted, uh, not in a way where we feel like there's a void that we have to fill. Wow. So that sounds really promising, man. I mean, I've always been excited, as you guys know, to see the whispers. I got my skin uh, right over here in the in the TV series. Uh, I wore it during the season uh, premiere, uh, you know, because I, I, I thought we would see them kind of earlier on in the season. I thought they'd be here, you know, earlier on, but uh, I'm not disappointed they didn't bring them in earlier. It's just that they had such a great story before lined up for the first uh, five episodes that they went with that and have it focus on Rick. Uh, and, and I thought it was great, you know, uh, amazing. Some of the best stuff of the whole series for sure with, depending on how you feel about episode five, but I think everybody can agree it's it was an amazing, uh, unforgettable episode. But um, yeah, man, this is going to be really different and uh, I'm trying to stay like open-minded. Uh, you know, there's a part of me that just wants to not even watch it anymore and I, I'm sure you guys are feeling the same way. We were like, well, if Rick's gone, I'm done. I'm just not even gonna not even going to try it, right? There's a part of you like that. Because uh, you feel loyal to that version of The Walking Dead, or you feel you feel loyal to that, and there's a part of me for sure that's still there that kind of feels that way. But you know what? Too that's not what Andrew Lincoln would want us to do. He wouldn't want us to stop watching the series or not give it a chance or that kind of thing just because he's not in it anymore. 
um, you know, he's going to want us to, to check it out still, right? And, and that they think it's really great. And uh, this new group of villains, certainly it's going to be something different. If people didn't really like Negan so much because they felt like maybe it was too similar, the type of storyline was too similar to season three with the governor and Woodbury versus the prison or something. Like if they felt like it was too like familiar. This is something different. Probably the closest group to the Whispers might be the Cannibals, the uh, Terminus uh, group, would be kind of like really dark and uh, terrifying and everything like that. And uh, not a group that's uh, similar to like, like I said, Woodbury, uh, the Saviors or anything like that that we've seen before as villains. So this one's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing how the villains come in in the TV series and uh, also looking forward to seeing how the viewers, how you guys respond to it. So leave your comments below. Let me know how you feel about this one. Are you still excited to see The Whispers tonight or do you feel like uh, it's kind of lost all of its uh, its uh, its hype because of such significant changes happening uh, in the series just recently? Um, Leave a comment below for that one, and we'll get into some of your guys' Q&A questions. We'll do some. Uh, Angel uh, Sanchez says, uh, what about Morgan? Because it's been uh, seven and a half years since he left at the end of season eight. And it's true, man. Morgan is way behind in terms of time. We don't know if Morgan's going to survive that many years. We don't know if Fear will do a time skip. It probably makes sense for Fear to do a time skip. What do you guys think? I think that they should probably have a time skip at least to get closer. Like I feel like, I feel like seven years is way way too much to uh, have not seen Morgan or to have Morgan so far kind of behind with the fear group, like the fear story being so far behind. I expect them to move the fear story up uh, a little bit for sure. Um, and, and hopefully, because I kind of like, when I watch the, the shows through, and this was always something I think was a problem with fear to begin with, I always kind of want to feel like the shows are relatively close in terms of the timeline. I don't know why. I just kind of do. It always irked me when we watched Fear to start with and we got to see the start of the apocalypse and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, that's cool to see and we want to see how the whole thing kind of broke out and everything. But it felt like the other story was so far ahead and it just, it had some weird feels about it. I think if the storylines, the years are, are somewhat closer, I think it feels more synced up. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just being numbery, which uh, sometimes I do that. <laughs> Hugabilly Sauce says, Hey, Trav, a Patreon here. Q&A in Season 1, the scientist uh, said uh, something about the last place he had heard uh, from was Switzerland or somewhere overseas. I think I think he said, did he say France or Switzerland? One of those. Uh, he went, uh, Andrew Lincoln, of course, went home to, uh, to England. Maybe he's going to do the movies there. Uh, so that is why uh, he hadn't returned in the six years because he'd actually be overseas somewhere. Well, the thing about that one is, so is the group that took Rick overseas or something? I don't really like that idea too much because they're in a helicopter. So helicopters, I'm pretty sure, run out of gas after certain, you know, for it to go from like the UK to the United States. You know, it would make sense in terms of like him getting back and why it took him forever to get back so we don't see him back right away in the next episode. Because six years he hasn't been back for. Yesterday's topic video, if you guys missed it. So how does it make sense that he never returned during that timeline? Um, what could hold Rick back from finding his family? So it uh, brings in some interesting questions. I forgot to mention that maybe he goes into another coma. I can't believe I forgot to mention it because I had mentioned it before and I failed to mention it in yesterday's video. And we talked about amnesia, couldn't go back due to being trapped in a bunker, a prisoner, something like this. But another possibility is he could go into a new coma, right? Because um, he was in one before and that would allow some years to pass and everything. But the group would have to basically take care of him during that time. So maybe he's in a couple year coma or something and then for the rest we see the rest of a struggle of him trying to get back and then can't and then gets sidetracked and then has to do other things and may never be able to return and then eventually maybe maybe does or, or the other or it goes the other way or something. But for him to go back to the UK of course in real life you know, a lot of people like this idea because they think, well, he could film the Rick movies and the Walking Dead movies in the UK, and that would be cool to see. And I agree, it would be cool to see, but I don't think it makes sense in terms of how it was set up. The person on the radio does not have an accent. Uh, he sounds American. Um, you know, the helicopter, helicopters don't go that far, you know, without refueling. So uh, I think it's probably a bunker or something like that, um, you know, and, and probably not that far away. But I could be wrong with that. Maybe a couple cities maximum or something like that. Alan Sun says, I'm looking for my family. The only sentence Rick remembers with his amnesia, <laughs> right? So he just like, maybe they got him working as like a janitor or something. And he just keeps saying it over and over again, right? He's like, you know, it'd be like a bad situation in the, in the thing. He's like sweeping the halls or whatever, or mopping the floors, looking for my family. You know, it's like over, it's like all he says, right? <laughs> so, um, 
That would make sense, but it'd be kind of tragic at the same time. Daniel uh, Verita Joe says, uh, Trev, do you think Sunday night's episode will be dramatically lower viewership uh, ratings than the prior week? Then after, so after Rick, uh, I think it'll be a little bit lower. Yeah, I mean, my predictions for ratings are not usually that good. I, I, I do them a little bit, but they're usually off. I thought that episode five would be a lot, you know, higher than the prior episodes this season. It turned out to be actually lower viewership than the premiere, which I thought was like so strange. But whatever, you know, it's a different age now with the internet and everything. And uh, you know, you see some really great episodes, and they're just not they're they're not showing it in the ratings. And you think like, okay, maybe at this point it really is starting to make. Maybe people don't really watch stuff live that much anymore as they used to. That's true on TV stations. Um, so you know, um, it's it's what it is. But I think it'll be somewhat lower. I'm gonna guess it'll be like four. You know, but who knows? Maybe it'll boost from Rick leaving to everything everybody talking about this week. I don't know, man. Uh, we'll see, right? So I'm gonna predict. I'm gonna go with four and hope I'm wrong. I hope it's six or seven, but you know, back up that way. But um, we'll have to see, right? I'll let you guys know next week when we when we get that, and we'll do a video on that coming up this week. Daniel Rees says uh, movies more like glorified TV specials, right? <laughs> so uh, that's possible, right? Like like they're 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 calling them movies, everything like that. But we'll have to see how much of a budget they have. We'll have to see what they have planned for it. I hope there's something real good and it turns out to be really cool and it's got some stuff that, that separates it from the regular Walking Dead. Like maybe, you know, just bigger scale and stuff like that. Maybe doing some things like in a heavy, dense city or something like that that we never get to see. Uh, Day of the Dead type of idea, something like that. Could be really cool, man. Um, but we'll have to see how, how it turns out, right, in, in a couple years when they eventually... Uh, get that one done for us. So George uh, Nugent says, hey, you really do these videos in one take. Uh, no cuts, very impressive. You need to get on Talking Dead. So uh, I've pretty much given up on that. I don't think I'm going <laughs> to try to do that anymore. Uh, you know, or anything like that. I think they do like the yearly whatever, Ultimate Fan or so. I don't know if they're still doing I'm not going to be going to be uh, trying to <laughs> try and apply for it anymore, that kind of thing, no. Uh, but then do I do the videos in one take? Mostly, I mean, I have to cut it to drink water in between these and stuff like that because I talk so much my throat gets uh, gets raw. But uh, especially with working, if I'm on the phone a lot during work too, sometimes it's really hard to speak because uh, I just talk so much. I burn a vocal burn. I burn out my voice. But uh, I mostly do them in one take. Man, you know, it's or, or at least uh, many minutes of, of talking with you guys about Walking Dead. I can talk about Walking Dead all damn day. You guys know. <laughs> you know I'm sure a lot of you guys can too. You know, when it's something that you really enjoy, you're really passionate about like that, and you got friends like you guys who want to talk about it with you, you can just talk about it forever, man. You know, we could just sit here. We could do a live hangout, I guarantee you. If we had the time, probably we'll do this one day, you know, when the series ends or something. Uh, you know, message me back and say, Trev, you said when the series ended that we would just do like a three hour hangout. We'd just sit around and talk about Walking Dead, right? <laughs> we'll do that probably. I think that makes sense, man. Yeah. So uh, when it's something you enjoy, when it's something you love, then, uh, you know, it's not that hard to do. Uh, Pang 404 says, Hey, Trev, at first I thought Z Nation was copying The Walking Dead a bit now, but with uh, talking zombies and a badass, uh, well, you know, he gets a little bit racial here with, uh, with, drawing a similarity between Michonne and Warren. Well, I always felt like Warren from Z Nation was like a ripoff of Michonne. I always felt that way. Somewhat. In some ways. I mean, just because of their nationality and their gender, I mean, they're not that similar in terms of characters. They're both super tough, everything like that. Sure, fine. But, um, you know, aside from that, you know, I don't like to typecast like that or like maybe that's not the right word, but I don't like to profile. That's probably a better word, right? Like to profile like that and say it that way. It's like, well, you know, I, I don't think that I don't think that what Z Nation has done with Warren had anything to do with them using Michonne as the lead for The Walking Dead. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, the similarity there due to that, but it's like no, you know, I'm I'm certain that she's like the toughest person around. She was already kind of doing it anyway. Denai Greer is fantastic, and you know, they asked themselves, well, who does it make sense to lead the communities? Maggie has to leave. Rick has to leave. Who's who's the person that would take over? Daryl wouldn't do it. Norman Reedus doesn't view that the character that way, and that being what would make sense for the character, and that's probably true too, right? It'd be kind of cool to see Daryl try to take the lead and see how he would do things, but um, you know, I guess uh, Norman Reedus doesn't view it that way for him. But you got Carol in there too. You got Ezekiel, and then of course Michonne. I mean, tough as nails. I mean, we can't forget, right? She's the one who killed the governor. She's the one who stabbed him, right? Rick was fighting everything, and she got him, man. Now. He had to be put down later, but she, she, I, I would give her the kill for that one because he was, he was going to die at that point, right? So, uh, she took the head, right? She took him, man, and uh, she, I mean, she's like, like Negan says, she's a warrior. So to have her be one to lead, I mean, to lead the Walking Dead and lead the groups um, against the Whispers, 
man, this is going to be fantastic. You get the strongest female lead we've ever had in the show, and you get probably the strongest female villain, most likely when we see her arrive. Maybe tonight, maybe not. Maybe in a, a week or two or whatever. Uh, this should be great, right? You know. Uh, but again, you know, I know I understand how you guys are feeling if you feel like you're, <laughs> you're cheating because it doesn't include Rick, and you're like, you know, you're feeling like it's not right to to want to still. Enjoy. So I get that too. I, I get both sides of it, but. Um, again, let's give it a chance. Let's go for it. Let's see how it goes, and let's see if we enjoy it. Um, you know, and uh, can we? S- probably, probably not as much. It, it wouldn't feel right to say we enjoy it even more without Rick. That would feel just really strange. But we at least got to give it a chance, and we got to see what the whispers are about, man. That's going to be really cool. So I'll see you guys back again tonight. I hope you liked the video. If you did, thumb it up below. Share favorite. If you want to support the channel through Patreon, Patreon link will be in the description. And thank you guys for subscribing. Thank all of you guys for all your support uh, and everybody and everything you guys do for the channel and keeping this, keeping it going. I appreciate it. That's it for this one, guys. See you again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. I'll see you soon.